today your philosophy popcorn and soda go hand in hand when watching a movie so uh my supplies are running a bit low we're gonna head up to the supermarket go to the shopping come back watch a movie then review it Woolies. Uh, Red Bull, sugar free. I normally get through two cans in a movie. Tonight I'm getting three though. I guess you'd call that a spare, I guess. Popcorn, well, it's suitable for a rom com, not for the movie we're watching. For an action packed movie like we're watching, you want to go for something like Pringles. TV snacks, the quintessential Aussie snack, applicable for any movie. And there's always room in the pantry for these bad boys. Okay, that's it for the snack shopping. Let's go and watch the movie. I'm with the goddamn show. The Dirt is a 2019 biopic based on a novel of the same title, which was released in 2001. It is a film that centres around American hard rock band Motley Crue, whose offstage behaviour gained notoriety and has now etched its way into rock and roll folklore. The film shows the band's early struggles and eventual rise to fame and fortune, which in turn led the band on a demolition path of excess alcohol, drugs and all kinds of destructive, outrageous behaviour. The film has a dark side as it focuses heavily on the band's illicit drug use and heavy alcohol consumption, with a particular focus on bass player Nicky Six, who famously battled a heroin addiction during the mid-1980s. Despite their struggles with drugs and alcohol, the band's popularity never waned. Their albums went platinum and their fame went global. They sold out shows not only in the United States, but worldwide also. Anyway, let's take a look at five fast facts that will kickstart your heart. Number five. Motley Crue is a hard rock band that formed in Los Angeles, California in 1981. Out of the band's original members, Tommy Lee was the only band member who was not born in the United States. Ironically, out of the four Maylins in the film, Colson Baker, aka Machine Gun Kelly, who is the actor who plays Tommy Lee, was the only one who was born in the United States. British actor Douglas Booth plays bassist Nicky Six. Iwan Rion, of Game of Thrones fame, also a British actor, plays guitarist Mick Mars. And Australian actor Daniel Webber was cast as the role of lead singer Vince Neil. Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> Number four. The band's signature song is Kickstart My Heart from their critically acclaimed 1989 album Dr Feelgood. The inspiration for the song came from a real-life incident whereby bass guitarist Nicky Six overdosed on heroin in 1987. He was pronounced clinically dead for several minutes. Paramedics at the scene were miraculously able to revive him with an adrenaline shot to the heart, which brought him back to life. On the night of his overdose, Six was out partying with Guns N' Roses band members Slash and Steven Adler. The film doesn't mention this verbally. However, there is a subliminal hint at the start of the overdose scene as the man on the couch bears a startling resemblance to Slash, the legendary lead guitarist from Guns N' Roses. Many other bands are referenced throughout the film. Even the Beatles got a mention. The Beatles don't even own the rights to their own music. It was likely out of spot that Motley Crue did not want to give any publicity to Guns N' Roses. Lead singer Vince Neil famously had an ongoing feud with their frontman Axl Rose. 
He even went onto a television network once and called out Rose and challenged him to a fight. This never eventuated. However, Neil did have a physical altercation at a music awards show in 1989 with then Guns N' Roses rhythm guitarist Izzy Stradlin. Number three. Vince Neil and Motley Crue parted company in 1992. Neil claims he was fired. However, the band claims he quit. It remains contested to this day. The film portrays an emotional reunion with lead singer Vince Neil after a five year hiatus, whereby they seemingly beg him to come back. The rejoining of Neil in 1997, however, is not as the film portrays. In reality, there were endless hours of managers and lawyers working behind the scenes in order to get Neil back in the band. This was a result of fan backlash, as the True Blue Motley Crue fans did not take kindly to Neil's replacement, John Karabi, and this showed through the fact that their shows were not selling out when Karabi was the lead. Despite the fact that Nicky Six, Mick Mars and Tommy Lee were happy with him and wanted to move forward with the new singer, it was eventually agreed by all that in order to recapture former glory, they needed to reinstate their charismatic and fan favourite frontman, Vince Neil. Number two. The film shows how the band recruited frontman Vince Neil. However, like in the movie whereby they meet him at a backyard party where he is singing in a cover band, in reality, the rest of the band met him at a place called the Starwood, which was a famous nightclub in West Hollywood, where many musical acts started their careers. The band felt Neil was a perfect fit, and it took quite a few weeks of persistence and constant trips to the Starwood in order to convince the singer to join their band. Number one. One notable absentee from the film is Pamela Anderson. Tommy Lee's infamous troubled marriage to the Baywatch star did not make it into the script. This was due to the threat of an abundance of lawsuits. The couple famously had a sex tape stolen from their house. The story goes along the lines of an electrician working on the couple's house was frustrated over a pay dispute and when working on the house he stumbled across a tape of the two getting rather friendly on their honeymoon. He stole it and distributed it in order to get revenge on the couple. Motley Crue. No strange yet a controversy. The film could have been a miniseries, since there is so much material to work with. Still, I think director Jeff Tremaine of Jackass fame did a great job of telling the Motley Crue story and condensing it down to a runtime of one hour and 47 minutes. Rotten Tomatoes didn't rate the film that highly, only scoring 39%. However, the audience reviews were much higher, 95% in fact. Who knows if there will be a sequel? No doubt the crew heads out there will welcome it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, my name's Julian, and I am relaxed.